Grüß Sie and welcome to Opus 19 of Classical Cake, the podcast where we discuss topics relating to Viennese classical music and Austrian culture while enjoying a delicious cake. I'm your host, Daniel Adam Maltz. If you're new here, welcome. Put your questions in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer. Click show more in the description below for more resources. Michael Haydn was Josef Haydn's younger brother. He was widely respected in the classical era and was admired by Mozart. He was musically educated alongside his brother Josef and Johann Georg Albrechtsberger in Vienna, however he made his career in Salzburg. He was even the teacher of Karl Maria von Weber and Anton Diabelli. You might remember today's guest from Classical Cake Opus 16, the other Mozart prodigy, Maria Anna. Dr. Eva Neumeyer is a musicologist who heads the Music Collection Archives of the Archdiocese of Salzburg and also works with the Mozarteum Foundation. We spoke over Skype a few days ago. Dr. Neumeyer, thank you for joining me. Thank you for inviting me. So normally, like we did last time, we enjoy cake and coffee together while we have a nice interview, but obviously Austria just started another lockdown. So when things are a bit more normal, I look forward to enjoying Salzburger Nachgerl with you in person. Salzburger Nachgerl is a souffle-like dessert, a specialty from the city of Salzburg. The dumplings are always freshly prepared and served warm with a light dusting of sugar. Sometimes there is even a raspberry sauce. So, let's dig in. Like his older brother, Joseph, Michael was also accepted as a boy soprano into the choir at St. Stephen's Cathedral in Vienna. Uh, what was his time there like, his early education? Johann Michael Haydn started as a choir boy in, at St. Stephen's Cathedral in 1745, following his older brother, who had started there earlier. He was five years older, Joseph Haydn. So these um, choir boys had to sing at St. Stephen's as well as at the Hofkapelle. Um, the upper voices were always sung by boys at that time, not by women. Um, and so they had six choir boys there to sing the choral parts and the solos. And um, there they were taught singing, but also instruments like the organ uh, or the violin. So both knew to play uh, these two instruments. Um, and also theory, music theory and composition. So his time at St. Stephen's certainly was the base of his later life as a musician. And that at this time that uh, Michiel sort of outshone Joseph, in many ways, showed the more promising talent earlier on, even uh, though we mostly speak of Joseph Haydn today. Mm -hmm. yeah. So eventually he uh, left, you know, as, as they all get older and their voices break, and relocated to Salzburg, eventually to be court musician and concertmaster to the Prince Archbishop uh, Sigismund Graf von Schwartenbach. Yes. Right. Uh, what were his responsibilities in this position? Well, he was the first violinist, the leader of the first violins. Um, Leopold Mozart um, at his time had been the leader of the second violin. So, um, yeah, violinists obviously had to play all the concerts, all the operas, as well as at the cathedral. The, mm -hmm masses and uh, whispers and, and stuff like that. So he had a lot to do. Um, he, at that time, he was mainly asked at, by the court to provide music as a composer, for, uh, to provide secular music. So at that time for the court, he mainly um, wrote, um, wrote, concertos and symphonies and serenades and also operas, operettas like uh, Die Hochzeit auf der Alm, Singspiele um, and stuff like that. It was this time in his life where he also got married. Did he have a happy marriage? I think he, uh, they were quite happy judging from the letters he wrote to his wife. Maria Magdalena Lipp um, she was a gifted musician herself. She was one of the Salzburg court singers. And yeah, 
I think they had a good marriage. One thing that is, has been reported is that he, she may have run into debt repeatedly. Um, that may have, and um, Michael Haydn had to bail her out several times. Um, that may have been uh, because these court singers, these female singers, got very badly paid. Okay. They had one daughter, but she tragically died yeah. with, within the first year of her life. She she died 10 d days before her first birthday, and uh, Michael Haydn is reported to have been very sad afterwards. There are no reports about the mother, but I suppose she was as well. They didn't have any children, any other children. So Prince Archbishop Schattenbach died in 1771, which gave way for Michiel to write his first major church composition, the Requiem in C minor. Mm -hmm. uh, what was its reception at the time? Uh, well, the Schrattenbach Requiem was really his first major commission for the cathedral in Salzburg. Leopold Mozart and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart were probably amongst the musicians who played because they had just returned from Italy the day before Schrattenbach died. Um, it was well received. Um, on the other hand, uh, Johann Michael Haydn hardly got any commissions for Salzburg Cathedral in the 10 years afterwards. Mm -hmm. And the reason for this probably was that Leopold Mozart was the chief organizer of the music at the cathedral and he gave all the commissions to his son. Uh, of course, uh, we are thankful for that because we have all the Mozart masses because of that. But Michael Haydn, Johann Michael Haydn, um, got the commissions from the cathedral, the big commissions, after Mozart had left for Vienna. That was his big time as a church musician in Salzburg. You mentioned earlier about, you know, the 10 years after this um triumph for Michael Haydn, if you will, that uh, Leopold Mozart kind of kept him out to promote his own son. Of course, we, we know how hard Leopold worked for his son. Yeah. Um, but this, you know, Leopold Mozart threw a couple accusations at Michael Haydn at this time that have stuck, you know, that he was lazy and a drunkard. Should we take Leopold at his word on this? No, definitely not. Um, this mainly stems from the letters of Leopold, um, especially one which was written after Anton Cayetan Adelgasser, another composer and court organ player, had died after a stroke he had had on the organ bench at the cathedral. Um, and after that, after Adelgasser had died, um, a successor was needed for Trinity Church. And Leopold Mozart was just trying uh, to get a job again for his son, who was, he was hoping, coming back from Paris. And he wanted him to be organ, organist of, the, of Trinity Church. And so that was in this emotion that he wrote that. There are other records of... Um, Haydn, that Haydn did like a glass of wine or beer, but he was always very moderate in his perusal of, uh, of alcohol. So we should not believe that. Michael Haydn, of course, was appointed uh, organist of uh, Trinity Church. So that's why uh, he got a little bit excited, I think. Perhaps, Perhaps yeah. there was some animosity there, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... In 1782, Michael Haydn succeeded Mozart as court and cathedral organist. You know, this is when you mentioned that he started um, writing a lot more church music, for which he is most well known today. Um, what were his responsibilities in this position? Well, he had to play one of the five organs of Salzburg Cathedral. He also had to teach the choir boys, the Kapellknaben, 
which he really did with great um, joy. And of course, he, he was also one of the foremost um, composers of church music at that time. Right, uh, this is when he was writing all of the church music. He was famous particularly for gradual settings, right? Yeah. This was a new thing in Salzburg. Yeah. At that time, that was kind of a new thing because um, instead of the gradual, before that, um, a sonata had been uh, played. And Loredo wanted the texts to be sung in uh, the in mass, the texts of the gradual. And Haydn wrote a whole cycle of graduals for each Sunday of the year, and that became very famous um, because people copied it. Mozart, for example, was. Uh, one of the first who wrote from Vienna, please send me, ask Mr. Haydn to send me his gradual uh, cycle. And several other people copied it and it really got widely disseminated. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned, or we talked about the sort of maybe competitive animosity that Leopold felt towards Michael, but what was the relationship between Michael Haydn and Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart? Uh, I think it's it was one of friendship and respect. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that Mozart copied several symphonies of um, Johann Michael Haydn, mm -hmm. so he was interested in his music. Um, and there's this famous story that Michael Haydn was ill and had at the same time a due date coming up. He had to um, compose six duos for violin and viola for the archbishop, because the archbishop was an avid violin player. And so he was sick and couldn't compose, and Mozart at the time in 1783 was visiting Salzburg for the last time with his um, young wife, Constante, and he visited uh, Johann Michael Haydn and um, saw that uh, Haydn couldn't write, so he wrote the two last duos for him. Uh, for Haydn to be able to fulfill his commission. And he, on the autograph, he didn't write his name. So it was obviously he gave them to uh, Michael Haydn to turn them in. So that's a kind of a nice story of a friendship. It's a very nice story. It's interesting. There are letters in Mozart where he talks about, you know, the two Haydn brothers, as, you know, who he holds in such high esteem. There was obviously more of an equality between Michael Haydn and Joseph that yeah. we tend to recognize today. Yeah, that's true. So yeah. um, I think so, around 1800 in church music, um, Michael Haydn may have been more famous than his brother. And how famous he was as a church composer, as a composer of sacred music, we can see that, um, that E.T.R. Hoffmann, who was from northern Germany, so far away from Salzburg, he wrote, um, and this is my translation, quote, every connoisseur of music and its output knows and has always known that Michael Haydn, as a composer of sacred music, has to be counted amongst the first composers of this discipline from every time and every nation. So that was six years after his death in the Allgemeine Musikalische Zeitung. So that show, shows um, how famous and how widespread his music was uh, received. Well, Josef Haydn got very famous too around that time, uh, mainly through his London symphonies and through the creation, of course. So that really was a, a, a bestseller piece. <laughs> But, uh, but still, Johann Michael Haydn was quite famous too. If you go to the archives, you sometimes, uh, around that time, you find more sources of Michael Haydn than uh, of Joseph Haydn. Yeah. So what was their relationship like throughout their lives? Oh, that was 
very friendly. They were very close in their youth um, as choir boys and then as aspiring young musicians in Vienna. And they um, kind of their ways parted when uh, Joseph Haydn was about 25 and um, Johann Michael Haydn was about 20. Um, and after that, they stayed in contact via letters. Um, and Haydn, um, when, for example, when Michael Haydn was robbed in Salzburg during the French occupation um, and lost his silver watch, Josef Haydn sent him a gold watch. Who was <laughs> Josef Haydn was at that time already very wealthy, and he could afford to help his brother. So. They very highly estimated each other, and um, Johann Michael Haydn also played a leading part in the performance of Joseph Haydn's big works like the Creation in Salzburg. So he was one of the, uh, in the beginning of the 19th century, he was a very important, what do you call that? Um, um, Influencer, musical influencer in Salzburg. <laughs> yeah, that's something we can uh, uh, relate to today with our, our own different type of influencers, right? <laughs> <laughs> do you think that the fact that he stayed in Salzburg has something to do with the reason why we don't, you know, speak of him as much as we do Josef Haydn or Mozart or his other contemporaries? I think one of the reasons why he did not get as famous as his brother is that he never wanted his music printed. And so, I mean, um, Joseph Haydn's works really disseminated throughout Europe via printing also. And that's what, um, what lacks with Michael Haydn's music. Um, that's also one of the reasons. And of course, Michael Haydn stayed in Salzburg all the time, so he didn't have the same um, exposure to other kind of music. So that's maybe one of the reasons he um, did not get as famous as um, his brother. To me, that highlights the way that we look at these composers today. And that's the mistaken identity, the Michael Haydn symphony that for years was thought to be Mozart's. It was Mozart, it was labeled as Mozart's 37th symphony, KV 444. And then it was discovered that the whole symphony is actually Michael Haydn, but Mozart, had, Wolfgang had simply composed a, an introductory adagio to it. Mm -hmm. And this piece of music that was often performed as a, as a you know, late Mozart symphony fell out of favor completely just because of the name Michael Haydn. The music didn't change, but this is how we look at these lesser figures. Right. There's a lot of great music written by these lesser known figures. Yeah. Um, and well, they are, they are not part of the canon as much as Mozart, Haydn and Beethoven, obviously. But I think Mozart, Haydn and Beethoven are partly performed too much. Uh, it doesn't hurt at all to hear between all the Mozarts and Haydn's uh, a piece by Michael Haydn or by Luigi Gatti or by some other composer who did very well at this time. Michael Haydn died in 1806 at the age of 69. His funeral was one of the largest that Salzburg had ever seen, a testament to the influence he held during his lifetime. He's buried, along with Mozart's sister Maria Anna, at St. Peter's Cemetery in Salzburg. Thanks, Dr. Normeyer, for sharing this classical cake with me. You're welcome. Thanks for asking me. And thanks to you listeners for tuning in. If you learned something new, then please like and share with your friends. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I'm Daniel Adam Maltz. See you in Vienna. Auf Wiedersehen.